everyone, how's it going? I'm currently using this laptop here, a 13 inch MacBook Pro from 2020, the one with the original M1 chip. And I use this every day for work, for life, and just everything in general. And if you've ever used one of these, then you'll know that it's really fast, it's got an amazing battery life, the screen looks great, the keyboard is great, the trackpad, amazing. But there is one thing that's a bit controversial, and that is the touch bar. Today I'm going to give a bit of a hot take and say that I think the touch bar is actually pretty awesome. Alright, 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 hear me out. So Apple first released MacBook Pros containing this touch bar back in 2016. Before that, they had full size function keys that you could easily press and easily see, but they replaced it with this little touch screen that could change depending on how you were using it. And it did some pretty cool stuff, but overall let's say the reaction to it has been mixed. If you've ever used one of these yourself, you've probably found it either pretty gimmicky or pretty annoying, or both. But the problem is, I think for most people, the touch bar isn't living up to its full potential. So today I'm going to show you how to turn it into something really useful and cool by fully customising it. Now I'm going to give a bit of a disclaimer here first though and say that in order to do this I had to purchase an app. They're not paying me to promote them or anything, but if you're watching this, Hey. So I just think it's a really great app. It's called Better Touch Tool and it actually does a lot more than I'm going to be explaining today. So do check it out. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's jump in. Alright, so first up I'll show you how I customise my touch bar and I'll break it down bit by bit. So first up, there's the play pause button. So this is cool because it works through almost any app that's playing sound, whether it's Chrome, YouTube, Spotify or whatever. And when there's something playing, the button actually changes to the icon of the app that it's coming from. Uh, volume up and down, this is pretty self-explanatory. I like having these single buttons, just like the old function key days where you could just hit one button. I'm not a fan of the whole slider thing from the regular touch bar, because it involves an extra step when I just want to change it by just a tad. And then there's the mute and unmute button, very useful, especially when you're in a public place. So the next part is my favourite the dock widget. So this is a fully scrollable mirror of the MacBook dock. So I can just open apps by just tapping on them. So thanks to this, I can actually fully hide my dock from showing. So normally I just hit one of these apps to, to open them and that just saves me so much screen real estate from not having to show this. Next up we've got brightness up and down. Same sort of story as the volume buttons. Next up is the screenshot button. So this one's really cool because it's just like the screenshot button on the regular touch bar and you can use it to capture your entire screen or just a window and you can use it to take either a photo or a screen recording. So next up is the battery time indicator. I really missed having this in the menu bar before Apple decided to remove it in 2017. So thanks to this, I can see it again. If I just want to know how many more days I can sit in a cafe working. So I've also set this up to open the activity monitor when I hit it. And lastly, there's this little handy button which actually allows you to return to the regular touch bar not that I ever use it really, but it's there if I need it. There are some apps like After Effects where I like to have the function keys all across the top, so that's where I like to use it. So yeah, as you can see, there are some really neat things here that are just not possible with the regular row of function keys, especially that dock widget, which is really cool. And it's also a lot more useful than the regular touch bar because you've got all these functions that are at your fingertips and you don't really need to look down to see them because they're always there. At least, I'm used to them anyway. And the best part is you can customize it however you like. So if you don't like my layout and you think it's a bit rubbish, then you can go ahead and set up your own. Now the only other caveat here is that sometimes this custom bar can close itself and you need to reopen it, otherwise it goes back to the regular old boring touch bar. So I've got a couple of workarounds for this and I'll get to that later in the video. All right, so here's how I set it up. So first off, you'll need to go and download an app called Better Touch Tool. I've been using this app for years, even before there was a touch bar, because you can set up all sorts of handy touchpad gestures and keypad shortcuts on it. So once you've got that downloaded, just go ahead and open it and install it the way you normally would for any kind of app. So once it's installed, you'll see this icon on the menu here, so just click it and open the configuration. And here we'll see all the options to customize the touch bar however we like. So in this top menu here, just make sure you've selected touch bar because that's what we're customizing today. But have a look at all these other things in the list. So you can customize trackpad gestures, keyboard shortcuts. So I'm just going to jump in here to the touch bar stuff. Here if we hit this button, we'll get the option to add our buttons and widgets um, starting from left to right. So, so I'm going to go ahead and hit this plus button and that'll give me the option to add either a button or a group or a control strip button. Uh, but a bunch of other things here. So because we're going to add them left to right, the first thing I'm going to add is the battery time indicator. So to find that, you'll need to expand the touch bar widgets menu. And if you scroll down, 
you'll find remaining battery time widget. Yeah, feel free to play around with all this, these other widgets here because these are super handy as well. So I've added the button and it's shown up on the touch bar here already. But what we can also do is take it another step and select a action so that when you tap the button, it actually does something. So what I've done is set it up to open the activity monitor. Uh, so I'm actually gonna, so I'm actually gonna type in app. And what we're gonna do is launch application. And then, and then select app file, and then just look for the activity monitor. Okay. All right, and that's done. We've added our first button. All right, so next up, we're gonna add the screenshot button. So let's tap the plus button again. And then here, we're just gonna add a touch bar button. So this is just a regular old button that you can tap. All right, so first we're gonna want to give a name to this button. So let's call it screenshot. Yep, just make sure this is ticked. Enabled visible on the touch bar. I'm just going to leave the rest of these settings as the default, 15 font size and 22 icon width. And what we're going to want to change is selecting the button icon. Here you've got a collection of icons that you can use. Um, I'm just going to type in camera. All right, this looks like a pretty good screenshot button to me. And then what you want to click here is show only icon, no text. Otherwise it's going to show a big old button with all this text on your touch bar. It's just a waste of space. All right, so now that we've got that set up, let's select the action for this trigger. Cool, so we wanted to take a screenshot, so let's type in screenshot and search for that. Great, okay, so let's choose that first one. So choose the first one, it's called capture and edit screenshot or video using new Mojave tools. And that's it. Now you've got a screenshot button on your touch bar that you can tap. Cool. All right, so now let's go ahead and add the brightness button. So we hit the plus icon again. We'll add a touch bar button. Let's call this one brightness down. So we're starting with the down on the left, just like it was in the original function keys. And for the button icon, I don't know about you, but a brightness button to me conjures up an image of a sun. So let's type in the sun. Little sun, big sun. All right, so we'll do little sun for small and big one for brightness up again. And the trigger for this, brightness, brightness down. Now to make this easier, for the brightness up button, because it's mostly the same thing, what I'm gonna do here is just copy it. And then Control V to paste it below. All right, and all I need to do is edit this one to brightness up. We'll change the icon to a big sun. And then we'll change the action for the trigger to be brightness up. All right, next. So we are going to add the fun one. We'll hit plus and we're going to add the dock widget. So we'll type in dock to search for it. And there it is. Boom. So the thing here is that you need to specify how wide the dock is that you want to make it. And this is a process of trial and error. So you can just copy the exact same number that I'm using here if you're following my guide exactly. So 495 pixels. And as for the options here, you would want to hide quit apps, hide folders, and you can even hide the running indicator, which is a little dot that appears below the icons. And that just makes them all look bigger and easier to press. And that's it for the dock widget. Now, after you've set up those options, you will want to go, go up here and where it says widget specific, you want to go up here and click on common. And right now it doesn't know where to place itself. So you'll want to put it on display order one, two, three, four, five. And that should place it in the middle of your touch bar after the buttons you've already set up. Alrighty, so next after that, we're going to add the volume up and down buttons. And just like we did with the brightness buttons, because they're so similar, I'm just gonna copy the brightness down button and then control V, paste it, drag it down here because it's after the dock. All right, so from here, I think you've got, the, you've got the point. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add the rest, just like we did for the first round. All 
Now for this last button, where we want to have that play pause button that changes its icon to the app that's playing, I'm going to type in play, and it's actually called the now playing widget. So yeah, pretty straightforward. Now we, this actually has the option to show what song is playing and what artist is playing, but I really just want to have a small button that I can tap. I'm going to select my default player to be Spotify. If paused, show a play icon. Show a play icon. We don't want to show any text. And for the icon, I only want to show that app icon. I don't want to show all the text. Let's turn that into a play button. I think I prefer this one. Now at this point you might find that the dock widget is all the way on the right hand side which makes it a bit hard to reach when you're using the keyboard. So I like to have my dock right in the middle. So let's go back to the dock and go to common. And I'm just going to move this around a couple of times and that should actually get my dock right into the middle of the touch bar so it's nice and easy to press. So now that we've gotten all of our buttons added to the touch bar, all we need to do is change a couple of settings so that we can work around the fact that the touch bar that this amazing awesome custom touch bar sometimes closes itself so we're going to go up to the menu bar and click on keyboard shortcuts we're going to add our first keyboard shortcut all right so i've set this up to hit the glowed button plus t or the fn button so the action we want to trigger is to actually toggle the better touch tool touch bar and you're done so whenever i hit the function button plus T, it's actually going to close or open that touch bar that we've set up. So we can easily switch between the default Mac one and, and the awesome custom one we've got set up. And the next thing you'll need to do is to hit this button in the top right corner with the three dots and then go over to touch bar. Now this should be on already, if not, click on that and restart it. Now. There's an option to show the macOS control script. I keep that off because otherwise it's just gonna crowd into our touch bar here. I've left this one on, show better touch tool icon, and that leaves the button on the left-hand side for you to toggle the touch bar. And that leaves the button on the regular touch bar to open up this one if it ever closes. So turning on this one combined with this one allows you an easy way to toggle between the two touch bars as well as the keyboard shortcut. So you have many options here. All right, so I'm not gonna touch any of the other settings. All right, now actually one more thing you'll wanna do here is go to the advanced tab. And down here, I actually turn on on touch. I actually turn on a light feedback here. So this allows you to get a bit of feedback from the touch bar whenever you tap it. So, so it kind of gives you that feel like you're clicking the, the trackpad. So overall, I think it makes it a lot nicer to use the touchpad because it gives you a bit of extra feel. All right, so that is it. You've now kitted out your very own awesome touch bar. From here, feel free to tweak the buttons and set it up however you like. There are heaps of other functions this app can do that I can't cover in this video. So play around with it and get it just right for your needs. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you're all like me and you're rocking one of these MacBooks from the last five years or so, I hope that you've got some renewed love for your touch bar and you don't feel the need to upgrade to one of these newer MacBooks and spend a whole lot of money just to get rid of it. So yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good one.